Hey everyone, it's John with Get Some Custom Baits. We are going to be fishing Pelican Lake, which is a lake in northeastern Utah, about 25 miles from uh, Vernal, Utah. And it's a great place to fish for largemouth bass and bluegill. I really wanted to catch fish on top water, so I started by throwing topwater baits, uh, mostly frogs. I cannot resist the temptation to throw a frog. As you'll see here, there's a lot of misses anytime you're fishing topwater. It's just part of the game. You're going to have misses, and I think there's a lot of smaller fish hiding in these weeds, so it's difficult for them to get the whole bait in their mouth. <laughs> But all of these misses, they still just add to the fun and the experience. Watching them blow up, surprise you, it's, it's just something that can't fully be explained. So here you'll see I finally get my first hookup. And of course it has to be on the other side of the weeds. So that definitely made it a challenge to get the fish to the boat. This trip for me though, it was mostly about experimenting with new baits and new colors that I hadn't used previously. And the majority of these fish that I caught on frogs came on two relatively new colors. The first one I'll show you here in a minute was Milk Monkey which is a, an awesome color primarily for crappie and other bait fish. But I thought, man, that would look, an, look like an awesome color to make a frog in. So I did, and it, it was by far my best um, colored frog. It got the most strikes. The second one was uh, I also threw a chameleon or color shifting frog that uh, I call rainbow trout because it changes colors from like red, green to purple, it's just beautiful. As you can see, when a larger fish gets their mouth around it, they get it deep. They really wanted this color. He was hungry. <laughs> nice. Thank you. So here's just a quick look at the three different colors of frogs that I threw. Um, the best one being the Milk Monkey, which is kind of a clear color with a little bit of white added to it and some uh, interference blue, so it just kind of gives it a blue pearl look and it has black flake in it, so it just looks amazing. The fish really seem to like it. And then the second color that I caught quite a few on was the uh, Rainbow Trout Chameleon. And then a third one that I hadn't mentioned yet was the uh, color changing motor oil color. Um, to me this color looks really really natural. Did catch a few fish on this one as well. But here's another really nice explosion that ended up in a really good hookup and another fish to the boat on the frog. Most of these fish averaged about one to two pounds, but I did end up catching a few that were um, above two pounds. Um, I caught one three pounder and one that spit the hook before I could get it to the boat that was pushing four pounds. So there, there are some larger fish, but they're still growing because of the treatment that they did a couple years ago to kill the, the carp that were making this lake uninhabitable for most bass and bluegill. So then I thought I'd try my luck out deeper. Um, <laughs> deeper I know is a relative term. This was in about 10 feet of water and the weeds grew up to about three to four feet below the surface. But that gave me just enough room to run a rattle trap or lipless crankbait just above the weed line. Nice. This is also where I seem to catch fish that were slightly larger than the average. And so like this one was pushing two and a half, maybe three pounds. 
This is a look at that lipless crankbait that I love to throw. I fish it almost anywhere that I can fish for bass because I have a ton of confidence in it. It's a really bright color, but the contrast um, I think makes it a lot more visible for fish. And so it's like a fish magnet. I love throwing this thing. Here's a second fish that I also caught on that same lipless crankbait. They were just hammering it. This one got a little sluggish once it got to the boat though. And there's another two pounder or so. Nice fish though. Again, this trip was all about trying new baits, and I, I re recently started fishing chatter baits a lot more, and I had recently made some trailers for them, so I just wanted to throw the chatter bait for a little bit and see what I could turn up. But honestly, you could catch fish a lot of different ways. Um, probably caught about four or five on the chatter bait. Definitely starting to build more and more confidence in a chatter bait. Chatterbait fishing really ended up be being a highly efficient way to fish um, because again the weeds were growing up to about um, three feet maybe four feet at the most so there wasn't a lot of the water column that you could fish above the weed line. Most crankbaits and stuff like that you just deal with them getting hung up on the weeds. Um, even spinnerbaits were, I caught a few fish on spinnerbaits but um, the chatterbait just seemed to run at the perfect depth where it was right above the weeds and these large bass would just come up and smash it. Here's another fish I caught off camera. I was having problems with my camera overheating. It was like 95 degrees and really, really hot. So I had to keep letting the camera cool off. Just took, took a couple of still shots while it was cooling off. And another chatterbait fish. Again, they were loving that chatterbait. Mm, the little guy. And this might have been the highlight of the trip for me. Again, another new bait, a new color that I've never fished before. I absolutely love it when a plan comes together and you catch fish on a new bait and a new color. So I don't fish swim baits a lot except for as a trailer on a chatterbait, which before two years ago I never really fished chatterbaits either. But I recently got this new um, this new bait and I can do some crazy stuff with layering. And so I created this red-sided shiner five-inch swim bait, which looked amazing but never had a chance to fish it and I ended up catching three or four fish on it during this trip and some of my biggest fish came on it too. And here's just an up close and personal look at that red sided shiner in the five inch swim bait. You can see it just looks amazing. How could a fish not want to destroy this thing? This was the second or third fish that I caught on this one bait. Again, just um, in that two to three pound range, but I uh, ended up catching probably 12 fish the first day and 10 to 12 fish the second day, um, as you can see on a variety of methods. So it was, it was just a blast to be able to try a lot of different things and see what the fish liked. If you ever get bored of catching those nice bass, you can always go after bluegill or if the bass aren't biting, these beautiful bluegill we're willing to play all day, any day. I caught these on just a tiny little mayfly that I that I made. So, um, But I, I captured this picture because my next challenge is I'm going to try to make that 5 inch swim bait in a bluegill pattern. <laughs> so I'm going to try to mirror it after this. Um, this fish that I caught so I'm excited for that can't wait to do it